Hey y'all, out here at uh, B-Router Custom again, and uh, they've got a Corvette that uh, actually just came back from SEMA. They're just, it's not completely finished yet. It's going to uh, Cabin Fever in Knoxville this weekend, and then it's going to be on tour. Um, I'll have Larry tell us where else you can see the car at. So make sure, if it's coming close to you, that you check it out. I think you'll see what I mean here in just a minute. But uh, Larry, how are you, brother? Oh, just fine, Scotty. Good to see you. Yes, you too. And that's uh, PJ. PJ, how are you, sir? Fine, sir. Good. Tell me a little bit about the uh, Corvette you got behind you. Well, we've got a 64 Corvette that uh, uh, has had a lot of cosmetic work done to it so we can put our big wheels under it. Uh, it's running a LS3 480 horse GM crate motor. Uh, it's got a 6-speed, six 6X six automatic with paddle shift. Wow, that's so cool. It's cool. Yeah. It's cool. It's got a custom frame under it, custom chassis. Uh, but the cool thing about this car is the body itself. All right, tell me a little bit about what you what y'all done to this. Well, uh, I'm going to give you a rough overview, then I'm going to let you talk to my son. Okay. And he can tell you how he did it. Now, PJ actually did the work on it. PJ actually He did does the work. all the work around here, the body work. Yes. Cool. Right. He, do, he does the body work. And then I tell him if I like it or not. <laughs> Armchair quarterback is what he is, professional? He rides my coattails. I got you. <laughs> that reminds me of a TV show, what is that, Junior versus Senior, yeah, on television. Uh, well, I don't know about that. <coughs> I just always right. Oh, well, there's no question. I could tell that. But this Corvette is built on the premise that GM could have built this car because it looks like a 64 Corvette with subtle changes. Even though they're dramatic changes, they're subtle to the eye. We're able to put a 18 by 10 inch wide rim in the back, a 17 by 8 and a half inch wide up front, and uh, PJ DeVille set up side vents that actually let the, the heat of the engine exhaust out the car, similar to a Z06 now. Right. Um, but to accomplish this type of work took about two years. So I'm going to turn it over to PJ and, and he's going to tell you sort of how this developed. Because right. the first thing that had to happen was we chose the wheels. And I told the owner, we're not going to build a car unless we approve the wheels. So we ordered the wheels the way PJ and I like them. Right. And then they wouldn't fit the car. Oh, so. And, and you're not even so much talking about a style of wheel as much as a size and the stance you're going to get from a particular wheel, right? Is that what you're, what you're talking about? Yes. So tell me, PJ, did you, uh, did you have to cut this car up? I really cut it a whole bunch. If you get a rough idea, this is a stock body. And if you come up front and look down the side, okay. you'll see, okay, both cars have the exact same frame, but you can tell by the offset of the wheel, you know, it's all the way out here and the rims in there because it, you know, very right. clears. Right. This car, we got that deep, deep look, right. the depth, but I had to widen the body, and you could tell the difference between both cars. What it was, the customer came up, we had a rendering drawing, and he couldn't visualize actually what it looked like. He was hesitant. I was in the other room with the car. I had the wheels on there, and he couldn't he couldn't imagine how it was going to look. So, anyways, he walked out of the room to talk to my father about doing the car because he wasn't really sure because he didn't have the confidence. I guess. I, I, I well, he probably couldn't wrap his mind yes. around it, right? So, anyways. Less than 30 minutes, he walked back and my dad was going to talk about some other things with the car. I've already had it cut and mocked up. So you made a decision for the man. Yeah. Yeah, basically. So don't bring your hot rod here, folks, unless you're ready to get it done. Yeah. So I, tell me, what did you end up doing? Where did you widen it? Where did you, what did you, uh... Well, from this point out, you know, I had to swell it and, you know, and make it. Uh -huh. And it's not... Loaded up with Bondo. I shaped the fiberglass. I laid it up, ground it, shaped it. So you can feel the thickness. It's not that thick. And also, right here is the original area, the, the width. Okay. So it kind of flows. 
then it comes back out and I widen it right in here it, it was a lot of cuts right everywhere even the uh, back end if you want to walk back to sure. look we even had to widen the bump, bumpers to make them look stock they sure look stock you wouldn't you wouldn't think that but the problem was, you know, it had the two tail lights. It just didn't look right. Okay. So we did the old California race car look with a, um, you know, three hip, uh, tail lights on each side. Right. And uh, that center so, exhaust fits right in there, perfect. Now, doesn't it? Yes, everything just kind of worked out. Symmetrical and all mm -hmm. that. Man, that is beautiful. What color is that? It's off the Audis. Uh, Reflux. No, it's a Daytona. Daytona. Gray pearlized. So like the Audi, uh, like yeah, the new so Audi's R8. R8 color is what I thought it was. Yeah, mm -hmm. oh my goodness. Now in here you can't really tell. You know, it looks like a charcoal gray. Right. Outside, it's got the bling. Right. And it, that's what customers say you wanted. Right. Well, you gave him what he wanted. There's no doubt about it. Let's look at that interior uh, just for a second. Yeah, when you get done with the interior, I'll show you what else I designed. All right. Cool. cool. And also in the jams, I, w I had to widen the inside of the door jams and, and make them look stock. It does look stock. You can see here, this is stock. All right. And yeah, is... sure enough, man. You can see that. The doors are actually wider. You had to make the doors wider, folks. To make the car wider, you had to make the door wider. Yes. Understand what he's saying. Holy smokes. I'm sweating and I didn't have to do the work. I just have to hear about it. And look at that, folks. Those are paddles on the back of that. Huh, how cool is that? And there's a button to turn them on and off over there. If you want to just do a regular automatic, if you want to do like a brainless, or if you want to do paddle, you can rotate through that. And a little bonus, stick around because at the end, oh, it's got power seats. At the end, um, we're going to start it, and it has a, it has a uh, cutout so that we can open the exhaust. Let me shoot it from this way. Okay. Holcomb did the interior in this one. Is that correct? Yes. Mr. Holcomb did it? Yes. Yeah, of course, beautiful. And what's that wheel out of? That's out of a new body style Corvette too, right? No, sir. What's that out of? That's from Flaming River, and then we custom made the center section. You can't buy the center. And those gauges are custom too, yes. for, right? Those are custom made just for this car. They're electronic. Man, all right. But you kept the needles, gauges. right? We kept the needles. So they look, they look like they belong, folks. They, they kept enough to make it look like it belongs, but it's all custom. Classic instruments from Boyntz, Boyntz uh, Michigan built that for us. Well, that's beautiful. All right, let's see what we got up front there, PJ. <clears throat> this has the, uh, the LS3 Corvette motor in it. And um, <clears throat> he wanted something to hide the colds and in a few minutes, I'll show you this motor. Okay. You kind of grasp what I'm getting ready to tell you. I designed these covers to go on the LS3. Right. To make it look like a factory motor. Sure does. Um, there's just all kinds of little little stuff that. Well, you cleaned it up yeah. underneath here. Mm -hmm. I mean, it looks like it would have back in the '60s before we started mm -hmm. running wires and all that mm -hmm. everywhere. Now, y'all did design and built that intake too, right? Yes. Boy, that's nice, man. That looks like, again, something factory that you would mm -hmm. buy. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful car. And the chassis. Did we, did you all did something to do with the chassis, too? No. No, it's no. a stock chassis up underneath it? It's, no. it's a chassis that's made to fit a stock Corvette. Okay. It's made by uh, street shops down okay. in uh, Anniston, Alabama. All right. And it's a very, very well-built chassis. Very nice. Okay. Both cars have it. Under I got you. Now, the difference between this car and that one, they have the exact same chassis, but the motors, this is the LS3, that's the LS7, that's the big block. Right. And I'm getting ready to make and design valve cover covers for it. Right. Um, now, the same guy who owns this car owns the red one. Yes. Why Why wouldn't he want it to go with the biggest motor he could have? He had, had this one built first. Oh. <sighs> And then he didn't realize this car was going to turn out this way. Oh, yeah, yeah. This car was supposed to be a a road racing, you know, get out and hit guardrails, you know, just get out and have fun. 
He's still going to drive it. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And race it, too, yeah. right? He's yeah. going to do it in, in yeah. a par, uh, whatever they call it, time trials, things yeah. like that. After the, sh you know, the show circuit. Right. Something tells me we should have a cuckoo clock going off right now. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Holy cow. You can see the big air duct fence on each side. Yep. <coughs> Sweet. And the lights, they flip up. Is it using stock headlights up underneath yes. there? Yes. Man, all that billet grill in there, that looks good. Actually, that's a factory 64 Corvette grill. You're kidding me. That's true. It is true. Folks, what I think is but custom, it, isn't it? it? It looks like a custom grill because we custom made a spoiler underneath that. Yeah, I was going to ask you about that. I didn't want to sound like a retard, but that didn't look like, that looked like something that y'all had made look better than what probably did from the factory. That's correct. We did. And that one over there would be the same, right? How it uh, was. This, this spoiler is different than this one. This one was designed after I saw what this one looked like. That's, that's what I'm saying on that, that one. No, that's stock. That's stock. Right, right, that right. Good, so yeah, you can see. It's the devil's in the detail. Everybody knows that, but you know, I mean, you you got to know, folks. When they're building one of these cars, they, they've got to be aware of how it's going to be in the end. You can't get one of these things done, get a bill to the guy, and say, "Man, you know, we could have done this, or we should have done that." And yeah, it's got to be everything it's supposed to be. What a beautiful, beautiful car. One more thing. Sure. The vents. Back to them. The, the owner wanted to keep everything Corvette. Right. From 59 to uh, C4. And these are off of older Corvette spears. Right. And the uh, wire mesh back in there, that, it really works out great. No, you, no, everything looks and like it fits. All this is handmade, and they pop off and on. If, oh. If you had it accident or something, right. replace them quick. Sweet. Everything's designed to, to replace. And are these real knockoffs? Uh, no. No. No, there are lugs behind Lugs there. behind it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But that's so a, cool. a custom grill of my shot. Shot. That has been developed to look like a real knockoff. Right. And they do knock off. Right. You unscrew those to get to the lugs. Oh, I got you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I see what you're saying. I'll show yeah, you. yeah, yeah. That'd be cool. Hopefully. Well, no, they're yeah, tight. Yeah. <laughs> okay. That's fine. And right here, you can also you can feel zero lip. Nothing, folks. Man, oh lot. How long you been laying plate, PJ? I don't know. Uh, I'm forty. I've been doing it since eighteen. So. Is it twenty-two years? Yeah. Man, oh lot. You remember the first car you painted? <laughs> you have a real car. Um, yeah, I think was it my little truck, my Nissan, yeah, the Scallops. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So you've been you've been interested in hot. Obviously, Dad yeah. fostered that, yeah. but it wasn't any prying to get you into the hot rod shop. You were there anyhow, no, right? I yeah. despised it. I oh, really? have nothing to do with it. <laughs> I started out making cookies. <laughs> I started working at a radio station for WMZ. When I was 18, uh, Power 1240, Oldies 102, uh, Knox County Highway Department. Uh, you did everything you could not to come work at the yeah, shop then. And it drove me back. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's like being in a mob, right? Yeah. I try to get out and they keep dragging me back yeah. in. But telling your first job working in a car shop was not for me because I wouldn't let you come work for me. No. You had to go to work for Oh, Bobby Alloway. He's not a bad teacher, though, brother. No. Yeah, no. yeah. I learned a lot from Bobby. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, I hope to get to meet him one day. I've chased him all around, told a lot of people I'd like to meet him. I understand he's a busy guy. Um, I understand he's a real nice guy, too. But um, <laughs> anyways, yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> come on. Watch this video, Bobby. If you got nothing. <laughs> like, like our parents said, if you got nothing good to say, don't say it. So. Come up here. Uh huh? Back to the uh, this is the LS7. This is considered the big block. Right. I'm, and later on in the future, you'll see, we'll come back and you'll see me um, design set of valve covers. Okay. Cool. For this. But that's what that looks like underneath it, basically. <clears throat> yes, under that. Now, your, your dad said, too, though, you had to uh, you had to move the uh, 
fuel rail? No, it was the, uh, cool the, the coils. The coils, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, on this car, there's a, a coil repositioning uh, kit that we bought. Okay. And we bought a set of valve covers that were taller. But then the coil covers, that's what PJ designed. I got you. Okay, cool. This one will be different because of uh, some other parameters and the LS7 being made different than the LS3. How many horsepower do you think that's going to put out? 530. You want to hear it? Yeah, we'll come back to that. I want to hear this one here. Uh -huh. So, yeah, all right, folks. Well, uh, we're going to come back and I'm going to staple in uh, another video of this thing running. So, uh, so, oh, you know what? I put this mirror here, or actually, Larry put this mirror here for me. I wanted to show you. We look at a lot of these cars up under, up underneath, and this one is again. Keep in mind, this this man's intention is he's going to show it. Where's this car going to be at? It's going to be in Knoxville at Cabin Fever this weekend. Where's it going after that? The next weekend will be in Wichita, Kansas, at the Daryl Starbird uh, Car Show, okay. it's the Devlin Starbird Charity Car Show, and then. Uh, Mid-February, it will be displayed at the uh, Autorama in Detroit. Uh, not necessarily as a competition for the Grade 8 or the Riddler uh, for various reasons. Number one, this car is to be driven, not to be shown. Right. But we will be displayed up front with the rest of them. Okay. And then after that, the next major show will be the Hot Rod and Restoration Show in Indianapolis, Indiana. And he plans on also running in some two good guy events. We're going to do the Nashville good guys and the Columbus good guys for sure, and maybe the Indy. And then we'll see how it does. You know, if it does well and we can get in some competition, then we'll right. do others. And, folks, he's not talking about showing it at those places. You're talking about driving it. We're yes. going to do it's a road course kind of a deal situation yes. there. Uh, time trials is what I'm trying to say. All right, good. Well, anything else you all want to tell me about before we uh, start her up? Good. Well, yeah. Uh, it was named after my daughter. Oh yeah, yeah. That's the, that's the name of it. Lydia. Lydia. Uh, the story is, my daughter has a pedal car that I built, and designed for her, and she was in the car show. And when she, Jerry, the owner, first saw her, she was racing another kid, and he he just fell in love with her. Right. And. Uh, he did. He called his car Lydia. Wow! How cool is that? What did she think of that? Oh, she's just four. Oh, okay. <laughs> so I got gotcha. you. So, she don't think anything of it. No, she just thinks it's pretty. Yeah, exactly. So. All right. Well, we'll shut her down, folks. And uh, next time we come back, we're gonna hear this thing run. Open headers and then close too. So stay tuned. Tell any difference, could you? Not, Not much. Really. What kind of exhaust is that running on it? I mean, a muffler system, is it? It's it's called it's manufactured by a company called Billy Boat. Uh huh. It's stainless exhaust. Uh huh. Uh, we're running three inch oval exhaust out to the with an X pipe. Where's the cutout at? Is it? It's in the muffler itself. Oh, okay. This is a similar to a factory GM. The, the valve you can't even see the valve, but up under the car, where's, where's my mirror again? Right here. Let's see if we can see that cutout valve. I think I see it. It's right between the, it's a, it looks like a pet cock kind of a thing. Yes. Uh -huh. That's it. Yeah, there it is. There you go. Yeah, see there you go. It? Yeah, there you go. Okay. You can see how the three, three inch exhaust cuts back down into well, the there, exhaust system. Hey, but that makes sense why we're not hearing much difference because the cutout comes after the muffler. Yeah. And then, you know, I tell people, not insulting the man's car, but if you don't put the cutout up there by the headers, that's where you're going to get your, you know, that's where you're going to get a funny car sound at. But everybody, uh, I got a buddy that went and did him, put him in his Mustang, same thing, put him after the mufflers, and I was like, well, I don't know what good that did. But anyways, folks, that car sounds good. It looks good. What a cool hot rod. I sure you all, uh, I mean, I'm, I hope you all have enjoyed it. Larry, thank you so much for letting yes, me come sir. out. Anytime. PJ. 
It was awesome meeting you, brother. Yeah, We're looking forward you. to working with you on some more projects. Uh, so there you go. Um, from B-Rod or Custom, there's uh, Lydia.